you know, in some churches you, you, you hear a bell as church is about to start or, a, or like a gong or something like that. In our case, we hear a beep from the camera. <laughs> Why don't we uh, stand together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way to your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated for the proclamation of the Lord? reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 78. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness, even though he struck the rock so that the water gushed out and torrents overflowed? Can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord, when the Lord heard, he was full of rage. A fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger mounted. His anger mounted against Israel because they had no faith in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged, bird, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp, all around their dwellings, and they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. Glory be to the Father, and to and the Son, and, Son, and to, to the Holy Ghost, Ghost as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now Amen. 
Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, since they had no root, and they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all your hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. You know, summer is uh, a good time in, in this area of the world. Sunshine, fresh air, unless it was yesterday. Um, it is. It is one of those. It's a. It's a good time for us to uh, to be alive and to and living here. The Israelites had lots of sunshine and fresh air. Also, they were out in the wilderness and. What they had in, in the wilderness that they didn't have in Egypt was the freedom to enjoy it. It was a good time for the Israelites. Except for that pesky food and water thing. Now, prior to the story that we heard this morning, the Israelites had already run into a difficulty with water. And God had, had looked after them. In this morning's reading, we heard about the Israelites and their food issues. They realized they had nothing left to eat. All everything that they had brought with them was gone. And so they complained to God. They complained, and God heard them, and God responded to them. In that case, their complaint was a, was a legitimate complaint. It was something that they absolutely, definitely needed in order to survive, in order to thrive, in order to continue on uh, towards the promised land. So God gave them food in the wilderness, bread from heaven, and quails in abundance. We can be a little like the Israelites. We can also be complainers. And just as, a, as an aside, this sermon existed prior to our conversation before church. Just <laughs> so don't think I'm just needling at you. Maybe we need it. So, we can be complainers. Take me for example. Yesterday, I was at my, uh, at my mom and dad's house doing the job that I hate the most, <laughs> which is trimming the cedar trees. They have a cedar hedge that goes around three sides of the property, and it is 12 feet high, and it is, uh, you know, at the corners, like five feet across. It, is, it takes all kinds of work and effort, up and down ladders, reaching, stretching, holding trimmers, it is not a happy scene for me. And, and I do my best not to complain about it to my parents, because I want them to ask me to do it so that they don't try. Um, but at the same time, there are complaints. And it was hot yesterday, and the air quality stunk, and the children were challenging at times, so that I referred to them as gold breakers at one point. At one point. <laughs> Complaining came rather naturally to me yesterday. And it comes naturally to all of us. We complain about all kinds of stuff, right? We complain about other people. We complain about pandemic restrictions. We complain about arthritis and uh, getting old and all that sort of stuff. We complain about bad tasting food, poor quality produce at the grocery store, bad, uh, bad experiences and bad attitudes on the folks that we interact with. We complain about all kinds of stuff. And there are certainly legitimate complaints. I mean, when you're in pain, there's, that's not a good thing. That's not a happy situation. But we do complain about silly things, things that don't really matter a whole lot. And that's a little different from the Israelites, at least in these two examples. 
Now we know they're going to get worse later on in the story. But it seems to me that every time I've ever complained about something, it has never, not once, not ever, made me more joyful. It's never given me an ounce of peace. It's never filled me with hope. If anything, complaining just makes me grumpy. It diminishes my life. It, it, it just it makes me unpleasant to be around. It seems to me that, that this kind of complaining, not the legitimate stuff, but the, the stuff that we engage with uh, in other contexts, it seems to me that that's sort of like those rocky, weedy soils that, God was, or that Jesus was talking about in the Gospel reading. It gets in the way of our faith growing and developing. It gets in the way of us living fully into the life that God's given us to live. So what do we do about it? What do we do to, to sort of address it? I think one of the problems is that we take for granted the, the grace and blessings of God all the time. And, and sometimes it's the, it's the easy stuff that we take for granted. We take it for granted that we have food in the cupboard, in the freezer, and wherever else we need. We take for granted that when we turn the tap on, the water will run out, and we're good to go. Um, we, we take for granted that the sun is shining, the air is fresh, and it's a beautiful day. And I wonder if the solution to this sort of complaining issue that we, that we sometimes have is just to give thanks. I wonder if the solution to that is to give thanks for the food that we have. To give thanks for that cool, refreshing drink of water on a hot day. To, to give thanks for the sunshine and the fresh air and the freedom to enjoy it. I wonder if the, the solution to that rocky weediness that's in our hearts is to give thanks. Because I think what happens when we give thanks is it begins to sort of work the soil of our lives. It begins to, to, to toss the rocks out and pull weeds and, to, and, and make that soil ready for it to grow. The thing is, when that soil is ready, when the gospel's planted in that, in that good soil, man, it can grow. And when the gospel grows, we're filled with peace. We're filled with joy. We're filled with hope. Thanksgiving helps that process along. It helps remind us of the rich blessings that we have, the abundance that we have. And that can allow our faith to grow and develop and bear fruit. And bear fruit in such abundance that we have enough to share with everyone. We are probably, all of us, a bunch of complainers. At least I am. Let's give thanks to God, because God's blessings are incredible, incredibly abundant. They fill us with peace, they fill us with joy, they fill us with hope. A hundred, sixty, and thirty-fold, enough and more than enough to share. Thanks be to God.
Hancock, Bob Alita Khan, Walter Cook, Mark Michelle Cooper, Madeline Cooper, Nellie Sherman, and Jane Cornett, and for all their families. Let us pray for all the faithful, that we would give thanks to God heartily and faithfully, that we would know God's blessings and share them with the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations. Let us pray that they would strive for justice and peace. Let us pray that they would love their neighbors, that they would seek peaceful and just means to promote the wealth and health, the health and well-being of their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in this world with legitimate complaints. Let us pray for those who struggle with hatred, with war, with violence, with injustice. Let us pray, pray for those who struggle with racism, with misogyny. Let us pray for those who struggle as a result of the pandemic, for those who struggle with natural disasters. Let us pray that God would relieve them and bless them and lift them out of all of their adversity. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Let us pray for this community, for St. Clair Beach and for Tecumseh, for Windsor and all of Essex County. Let us pray for all our neighbors. Let us pray that God would enable us to love one another care for one another, to support one another, to help one another, and to guide one another to a rich and abundant life together. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear yeah. our prayer. Let us pray for those who are in need of our prayers, for the sick and the suffering, the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill and the addicted. Let us pray especially for John, Norm, Burl, Jan. Walter, Bill, Lillian, Eric, Mark, Janet, Ed, Karen, Scott and Andrew, Susan, Marge, Joan, Art, Phyllis, Mike, Mary, Matthew, Anita, Chantelle, Carol, Jen, Brian, Bob, Michelle, Larry, Daniel, Brenda, and Phil. Let us pray that God would heal, help, restore, and lift all of them up. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those who mourn. Let us pray that the good news of the resurrection would give them peace, comfort, and hope. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that we would know peace, joy, and hope with, thank with thankfulness and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray all of us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy who welcomes sinners and invites them to his death. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Be steadfast in faith. Joyful in hope and untiring love all the days of your life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah.